What's going on everybody? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video and I got a good one here for you guys today because I want to make your job a lot easier especially if you're a prospective web designer developer and you're looking for work or maybe you're freelancing and you're trying to get clients but instead of you having to cash your reel out there cash your fishing rod out there and trying to fish for people and you putting in all that energy where should your energy actually be spent right now at this time should it be spent actually propositioning for clients propositioning putting in resumes trying to look for work or do you want to get these people to come to you so you can save all that energy? Let's talk about it right after the intro. All right, like I said, I believe that this is a good video today. This is a good one, something to dive really, really heavy into. And as you can see, I have a little presentation type going on up here on my video channel right now. Um, and the best way that you're going to get people to come to you is by solely becoming a content creator now you hear a lot of people talk about on the interwebs in the past and all sorts of timelines and all sorts of multiverses that you have to make a job of getting a job you have to make a job of getting a job so that means that you have to spend 60 hours putting in pumping and dumping resumes into things like indeed.com monster.com etc etc just to try to get somebody to look at your work and give you a shot at getting hired should your energy really be spent doing that though what, what would your energy be better spent doing rather than that and i actually think that being a content creator is better than actually being a job seeker i'm gonna be honest with you i haven't actually had to look for a job in like it's been a while it's been it's been a while between my teaching experience and my the doing this having my youtube channel up and, and just putting out content and and really just word of mouth i haven't had to even fish for clients in a minute i'm not i'm not capping at all i, I have not had to fish for clients i'm not on old desk or old desk oh i can't believe i said that. i'm not a, i'm not on uh upwork right now uh on fiverr or anything like that trying to get clients right now at this time although though i've heard people become very became very wealthy <laughs> <laughs> they made quite a bit of money for themselves in those spaces, but I haven't had to do that like I, ever. I, I have not had to go and fish for people. People have been coming to me either through word of mouth or just seeing my online content. And I think the online content is actually twofold because not only does it put you in a space where people are coming to you, but you're also making money in the process. You're, you're generating, you're putting yourself in a position to generate income. And if you're a job seeker, if you're putting out, focusing all your energy and time, having a resume and everything else set up, then you're not, you're not actually gaining anything from that. That's a one way street right there. There's no benefit to that outside of you just putting together a resume, putting it out there and praying to the, the, the employer gods. I don't only believe in one God, but just follow me on this example for a second that somebody is going to see your stuff as it gets lost in some sort of job search algorithm. And that to me that your time could be better spent actually becoming a content creator. I actually have a very short resume on hand here. Not saying that I don't have a resume, but I do have one on hand, but I don't, I'm not even going to pull it up. I, I really even have to use it because I get people coming to me. So I wanted to share that experience with you to make your job easier because I believe that you'll benefit more from that because it's a, it's twofold. Not only are you having people come to you, but you're also in a position of where you can make money by offering some sort of educational service, sharing whatever experience you have, packaging it up through an article, a blog post, or making a course out of it. You, you, you're becoming the, I don't like using the word expert because that to me, that, that is a, uh, end all be all term. If you're an expert, then you're, you just know everything. That's what it comes off as. So I prefer the word specialist. I actually like the word specialist because you need to have some area that you're focusing on. You're diving deep into, and you're offering that experience in the form of some sort of product or service where you're making money but you're having people come to you and hopefully you're generating that network online and offline. So I know I went into a tangent there, but I'm just, I'm really excited about talking about this. 
So becoming a content creator is going to be your better bet. I think that's best focused on focusing your content on making online content rather than resume content. Though if you are a good resume writer, you couldn't offer that as a service. First things first, your YouTube channel. All right. Uh, what I, let me let me say this. These three things. The, there are three things that I'm actually suggesting. Three platforms: YouTube, Medium Partner Program, and LinkedIn. Why or why am I suggesting these three um, in concert? They should be used. I think these, if you focus on these three platforms and, and you can actually, if it's too much to focus on three, focus on one. But these are the three platforms that I think are going to work well in concert. Why is that? And I actually have some additional notes here that I didn't get to write here on. But we're going to say the quality of leads. All right. I already mentioned establishing yourself as a specialist. But with these three platforms, it's the quality of leads that is going to matter. If you're trying to get people to come to you, if you're on Facebook, you're on Snapchat, Instagram, not saying that Instagram can't be taken seriously, you're on TikTok. I mean, those platforms are are normally more entertainment based, more geared towards entertainment. And and like I said, there there are people that are making, have turned those platforms to be very serious for that matter, but they're more entertainment based. If you're trying to be on a more professional playing field, playground right now then these three are going to be your better bet where people can actually see you in a very serious light especially if you're able to write well you start learning how to write well and articulate yourself through the written word through medium not only do you get people coming to your blog post or your articles and reading it but you also get paid from the partner program Uh, i would I'm, i'm gonna have to show you my stats here in a little bit but it's gonna require me to log out of this So we'll probably do that here in in just a short while. But let's look at my YouTube channel, for example. All right. So uh, I have a bunch of videos here. A lot of videos I was experimenting with them, trying to figure out what I wanted my channel to be about. And it wasn't until I actually made, let me go down some. I started making a few tutorials uh, in in terms of some website back end, like how to generate a CSR. Uh, what else? What else? How to easily add Google fonts to any website, uh, email for it, and those sorts of things. I started to actually just play around with in terms of my own web design experience, my own Photoshop experience, graphic design, what have you. All right. But it wasn't until I actually made this video right here how to resize images in Vimeo OTT. Let me, is that the first Vimeo OTT? Yep, yeah, that is. This was the very first. Uh, Vimeo OT. No, it wasn't. I take that back. Here it is. I knew it was one before that one. How to edit a Vimeo OTT theme. And I made this three years ago and it started to get more views on my channel than any other video that I was making before here at the time. It started to pick up steam. I was like, huh, I got something here. So I made another Vimeo OTT video and that started to gain more views. And in between that, I wanted to stick. I, I didn't really want to be focused at the time as you can see three years ago i didn't really want to be focused on making vimeo ott content because i was still heavily involved in general web design and development so i wanted to make things that i was very familiar with in that regard but as i continue to make videos and we continue to just experiment with things such as the linkedin uh, code and skills quiz how to install rapid ssl um, even vlog style videos psa for up and coming black coders I actually paid a visit. I was like, maybe I have something here for the Vimeo OTT crowd because I started to get more people to actually ask me just based on these two videos down here. So I made more Vimeo OTT videos starting from right here. All right. It wasn't until two years later after those other two videos that I made with the Vimeo OTT files. All right. And then I just started to... um later on in the year continue to take advantage of that and make it more and more vimeo ott content and i found an audience with that so i became i started to really dive deep into the back end of the platform i did it for one client actually and that was this person down here deshaun roby i I built her vimeo ott platform and i took that experience and i basically talked about it uh, through a series of other videos and trying to teach people how to do certain things on the back end and that led people to uh, send me private messages on my facebook fan page sending me messages through my email i started listing my email address so people could easily get a hold of me 
So that that really opened some doors. So once I actually saw that there's an opportunity here, I need to capitalize on it. That's what I did. And I just started to really double down on making Vimeo OTT content. And I even was able to actually make a quick start course because I know there was some confusion. There was a lot of trial and error, people not understanding Vimeo's OTT's um, user interface in order to like where to start on their videos. So that really gave me a huge opportunity to launch my platform. So and I started having more people come to me that I didn't I didn't seek nobody. I'm not seeking anybody out to try to help them build their platforms. I promise you I'm not. YouTube is doing all the heavy lifting for me as well as my I'm starting to utilize my Facebook fan page. So I'm really starting to utilize these platforms to bring people to me. And keep in mind right now, I this may sound foolish at this moment, but right now I'm playing on their real estate. I know I need to build my own website and have my own real estate. I did at one point, but it was just easier to just create the content and just distribute it out to multiple platforms. So when I get some time Right now, I'm going to focus on just still building that content and building these products. And when I get some time, I'm going to reestablish that home base. So I do suggest that after a while, but that's what it is. Uh, While well, I have LinkedIn open, I'm going to go to LinkedIn and then we'll come back and I'll show you the stats of my medium partner program. All right. But for LinkedIn, the reason I'm showing you LinkedIn right now is because, like I said, we're still talking about the quality of leads. And with LinkedIn, it's debatable in terms of how serious LinkedIn is. A lot of people like to argue that it's just becoming a professional Facebook with a lot of, you know, immature posts or whatever the case may be. I'm not going to get into that. I just know that LinkedIn's tools, their features are still professional directed. They still have a professional directive to them. And one of the things I want to show you guys is their skills test that you can actually take here on LinkedIn that will get you even more so highlighted. Uh, with several people that have premium accounts and they're looking for designers, developers to help them with their websites and to see who they are. So um, I passed my CSS3 LinkedIn skills assessment as well as my HTML. Uh, I still need to do the JavaScript and I still need to do the front end development one. Now, I'm not very savvy in JavaScript. I partly only know JavaScript with some jQuery but I don't dive deep into JavaScript, so I'm not. I'm probably not going to do too well. It's going to take me some time to actually really kind of dive deeper into JavaScript to in order to pass that. But for the most part, I know HTML and I know CSS, I know front end and several other things also as well that I could probably take in order to make myself more attractive, more alluring to employers that are just looking for people. I don't and like I said with this when you take these years you're starting to have people that they'll break they'll rank you up higher above a lot of other people in terms of the job search um, in terms of what employers are looking for so they can actually um, see that you are of high quality so just like you're looking for high quality leads these employers are looking for high quality prospects as well so you also want to get people to endorse your skills and some of these I didn't ask for. People just I just knew me and they just knew what I was capable of and they decided to endorse me. And based on some articles that I wrote here and some content that I actually managed, um, that also got people that, that raised some awareness with some people that decided to endorse me as well. Let me actually see if I can go find my content. I'm actually, let me see if I can find all my articles that I wrote here. Uh, let me see here. Skills and endorsements recommendations interests causes okay i can't find my uh, uh let me see here i cannot find my articles here but let's see what we got here okay all right i wrote some articles also on linkedin as well in order to take advantage of their writing platform capabilities and to bring myself up more in search engines by writing relevant articles that's relevant to what i'm trying to look for and that sort of thing so that's also something i would also suggest but if you want to raise your value you want to add more notches on yourself to so you can have people looking for you i would highly suggest taking the skills assessment quiz and i will also suggest to you to go ahead and look at my video the linkedin well we saw it earlier here it is pass your linkedin coding skills quiz 
so you can kind of see what that's like and i think i made a video where i was actually this video is me actually taking the test in live time it may not be i can't really remember it's been a couple of years ago but twenty thousand views has helped somebody out all right so uh, with that being said let's go ahead and let's take a look at our medium stats okay so here we are on my medium back end page look showing my stats and most of my views are actually coming from comments that i actually made on other people's blog posts and articles that i just read in my spare time uh just getting involved in the community but it tells you in terms of all the uh reads views uh the more reads you have the more that you're going to actually make um in terms of this but if we take a look at uh, where is that article that I wrote? I wrote all, write all types of articles. I have Christian articles. Um, I have a publication called No Niche. So if I have anything just random I want to write about, I, I write about it. I have a Christian publication as well. But for the most part, a lot of my tech articles go to the, um, let me see, they go to the, Let's see here. I'm trying to look for a specific one. Five reasons web designers. Okay. This is one tech article that I actually wrote here. So we can take a look at that. Um, at the time of this, this has only earned me four cents. So um, uh, for me, not too shabby. I, I'm grateful for the 19 views that it has. An average reading time is one minute and 13 seconds. Five reasons web designers and developers will never go out of business. And that was written on December 13, 2019. But if, they, if people are coming to read this and they actually see that I know what I'm talking about, that's also establishing me as somebody that has shown himself to be very proficient and competent in this area. So let's go back. There's another um, one that I wrote where I actually did a documentary, a video documentary, um, and it was about Black Planet, the rise and fall of Black Planet. Dot com. So as you can see, I get a lot of views on this one. I've already earned only $6.46. But when people see my ability to be able to research and chronicle companies, to be able to tell the story, that also shows my competency in terms of what I'm able to do uh, from a writing perspective on technology, on the technological side. So you're, you're not only just showing your ability to code and, and being able to build technologies, but to understand it, to write about it, to pull apart the story. You're showing a different side of your skill set to uh, perspective people out there, prospective people out there who are looking for somebody that is very advanced in their field. All right, so though this doesn't have anything to do with web design development per se, like I said, you're showing a different side of yourself and your skill set by being able to write and articulate in a way that would attract people. So you're, you'll be able to show people that you have a marketing side to yourself. Let's see if we can look at this story real fast here. So you can see, look at that. I still like this background with the rise, <laughs> the little silhouette in the fall. I still like what I did here. Um, but yeah, this was about a 10 minute read because I documented it. Then I also made a video that's also on my YouTube channel as well. All right, so the, I give people a choice to either read it or they can view the blackplanet.com video here. So if you're not familiar with blackplanet.com, very old school website back in the day. Um, but for the most part, that's going to be it for that. But you can actually see on the back end that you have. The reason I'm showing you these stats right here is because you have the opportunity to make some money on medium.com and get people to come to you. They even give you the opportunity to even like have people, subscribers, subscribe to your email list. They give you an opportunity to create your own email list and import it. As you can see here, you can now import subscribers into your email list, which is what I haven't done yet. But I have that opportunity. So... I don't think I want to just randomly import people into my email list. I'm like, oh, you were on my medium. You're a medium subscriber to me. I'm just going to send you start sending you random email um, emails to you. I mean, that, that just seems a little weird, but I have to go about figuring out what's the best way for me to actually uh, communicate with them. All right. So pretty much everything on this list I've already kind of talked about without, you know, going in a linear fashion. Client testimonials. Um, well, actually, let me go back up one to this bullet point. You're not going to, you're not going in making entertainment videos. When you're talking about YouTube, or even if you're making entertainment, I mean, videos for LinkedIn and YouTube, you want to go in making maybe how-to videos, some tutorials, or edutainment. 
And the only person I ever saw on YouTube that was like that done this really well was a guy by the name of Dreaded Dev. He was able to incorporate his personality. He was starting to actually do uh, educational web development videos and to using CSS and doing some cool tricks. So he's somebody that really mastered the art of being um, an edutainer, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if I just created a new term there, an edutainer. I mean, he's so awesome. So that's something I'm actually working on, but I'm a very, I don't know, I guess monotone, straight to the point guy. Not really straight to the point, but you, you get what I'm saying right now. But that's something I'm still working on in terms of my own camera presence and making these types of videos right now. But I just want to provide the information because I just my intent is to be helpful and as assistive as possible. Client testimonial videos. So instead of getting written testimonials, maybe you want to get some video and audio testimonials to put on your website if you have your website or put it on your YouTube channel. Like have people maybe even share, ask them on LinkedIn to maybe create a video talking about what you're able to do for them and on linkedin you can see that you get these little endorsements from in terms of skills um but you, when you can get a recommendation a written recommendation and have it set into your uh linkedin profile it really makes you look good and it makes you even more attractive that people you're not just boasting about your own skills but other people are able to speak about who you are as well and what you're able to bring to the table and what their experience was like working with you so if you can get a written testimonial for LinkedIn, that, that's great. That, that's actually a bare minimum. But if you want to go above and beyond, a video or audio piece would actually set you apart from everybody else. So you want to find a way to make yourself more attractive and get more people to come to you. Um, so results based videos or audio demonstrating your communication skills through consultation with clients, as an example, um, and LinkedIn skills assessments, which we already went into. Uh, I had logged out of my account, so let me go ahead. I'm going to log out here. Okay, I'm not going out of respect for one of my clients that I worked with. I'm not going to play these, but I want to show you these videos right here because these are videos where I'm actually working with the clients and I'm showing them the results that they're actually getting. Now, if I got permission and my client agreed to re have me release these videos to where I can actually show the type of dialogue and communication I'm having, the results the back and forth that also makes you look good in terms of you being able to articulate a certain problem and being able to solve it with the design skills that you're using to help them accomplish what their goals are and for them this was me building and redesigning and recoding a U screen platform theme for them the polaris theme actually so i didn't know and this was my first foray into U screen i had no U screen experience but this experience firsthand gave me everything that i needed to be ready to actually start doing you screen content now so all these doors are just opening up and and this is for me it's all divine it's, it's all god just opening up these doors so i praise god for that right now and, and just making these things possible but i want to share all of this with you because like i said in the beginning it is better in time you'll build a reputation to build and focus your energy on building content creating content uh having these platform accounts and distributing that platform that content out throughout all the platforms now i will say this too that there are companies if you are trying to get with a company you're trying to work for a company you're not really trying to work for yourself there are companies that still look for you to have your own website and to have a portfolio so i'm not discounting that at all but i if you get in this position where you're constantly having people come to you word of mouth and you haven't you don't have to fish out for anything you may not have time to actually build a website and that, that may actually be a better position for you to be in because at least you know you're getting some work but like i said i would not discount having a website having that portfolio and it being uh googleable <laughs> that's not really a word but it being googleable i guess noriega said that on drink champs i can't really remember but it being like very much so being able to google and for people to find you in the search results and they could be able to hire you and that sort of thing. So in any case, I hope I made my case for you to become a content creator so you can get people to start coming to you rather than you going to them. You spending a lot of time. I hear a lot of heartache and pain. <laughs> Sound like a bad R&B song. There's going to be some heartache and pains um, in terms of people just sitting up here making a job out of getting a job and it's time to kill that it's time to end that 
I mean, we're in new times right now. I think your energy should be focused on being a content creator. If you are in the web design and development profession, if you're a software developer, whatever, actually, wherever profession you're in, you could be a chef. You need to show that you're able to build and build up your own database of clients, that you're able to go out there and get the work on your own. If you're cooking, then, then make some cooking videos and showing your ability to cook and and how, how are people receiving this? What are you actually doing with this? And then like other companies would see that even if you're just a small fry in a big pond, they'll be able to see like, man, he's he or she is really like done well and, and building up their own thing. We can actually use them on our team and, and, and pay them even more money. You see how, how that sort of thinking is coming about. So. So, yeah, like I said, I, I don't I haven't capped even the, with the client that I showed you guys on the back end of my YouTube channel. I, he came to me. I didn't come to him. He saw what I was able to do on YouTube with the Vimeo TT back end. We started talking. I built, we, he didn't want to go with Vimeo TT. He went with you screen and the rest is history. So like I said, I really hope y'all spend that time building content rather than sitting up here and being the, the Fisher person, fisherman or Fisher woman and trying to sit up here and get make a job of getting a job because right now in this day and time i believe that's kind of ridiculous but in any case um oh oh there's one more thing i do need to show you guys i'm about to end this video but there's one more thing um for in the year of 2019 to 2020 i worked here at this place and um right here in good old waco texas woodway texas i worked here for a year and this was another uh person that i i did not seek out word of mouth he had a sister that heard that I did this sort of thing, did web design and development. Uh, I came in for an interview. It took me about a month to interview because I was still teaching. So we wanted to just get acquainted. And by the time my school year ended, I went on ahead and started working for him for a year. And I actually went back into the classroom because I, I kind of missed the classroom a lot. And I still just do web design and, and everything else on the side right now because I teaching. It's something I enjoy to do at the heart, but I did full term web design and development at this company right here. Um, I, I I even have a logo that's uh, on another building. Uh, I'm have to actually find that later, but I have a logo that I helped this company actually design. Um, and yeah, it's been a, it was a good ride though. But that that's the last thing I wanted to show you guys uh, that you can have people come to you rather you you go to them. If you focus on a process of content creation, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if there's something that I missed out or you have questions, please leave a comment below and we will go from there. DLJ works. See y'all in the next video. God bless.